Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this virtual event. Uh, my name is Ahmed Jabra. I'm one of the senior cybersecurity engineers for Tenable in the Middle East. Um, today, we will be talking about the challenges and the concerns that we have on um, the ICS or the OT networks in terms of cybersecurity. Um, one of the um, primary things when you approach any topic is, is really to understand the differences in priorities. Uh, for most of us coming from an IT background, um, we really know and understand that our primary asset is data. Uh, so confidentiality, integrity, and availability is really our concern. Uh, every time we approach a network, we design a network, we try to secure the network, we always take these three primary points into consideration. For OT people, the, um, the uh, priorities are a little bit different. Safety is primary. Safety could be the number one priority for OT organizations. Um, of course, reliability and availability for the network is as important. It has an impact on the reputation, um, on the um, relevancy of the organization, on the profit and revenue they can they can make. Now, one of the things to understand is safety doesn't really mean just physical safety. Yes, it does mean human lives and saving human lives, either uh, the people who works on these organizations or the neighboring um, areas or the community and could be countries or worldwide impact. Environment protection is as important as well uh, for multiple reasons. All of these comes under safety. Physical security is easy, easy to understand, but also damaging the equipment, which costs millions and millions of dollars and takes long time to repair and recover. And that costs a lot of revenue losing. Um, product quality, um, each business has its own unique challenges and it has its own unique safety measurements. Uh, so for example, if you're looking at a food manufacturer, um, uh, losing the recipe could be a safety concern because that really impacts the brand and impacts the income to the organization. So safety has many meanings and that's why safety is considered to be the number one priority when it comes to ICS network. Now, if you reflect back on IT network, um, do we really consider safety as number one priority? Yes, it is a priority for an organization, but definitely not number one priority for 99.9% .9 of the IT organization organizations. And the reason we're focusing on the difference of priorities is to allow us people coming from an IT background, approaching and working and collaborating with people from an ICS background or engineering background, is to have common ground and common understanding and what's important for you and how can we support you to achieve and get to your targets. Now, if you just look at attacks, historically on the OT network. Um, there are many of them, uh, but what does it really mean in numbers? And, and if you look at some of these examples in the slide, um, in 2010, uh, Stuxnet is, is really popular, but what's really, I wanna take the other side of, or the other side of the coin. Um, now the overall nuclear program for Iran is estimated to have cost $110 billion. Um, that specific attack is, um, is with multiple studies, as a result of multiple studies, um, they they saying that this put the program back five, five years back. Um, if you look, for example, at Black Energy attack on 2015 on Ukraine, um, uh, power, power generation networks, um, the result of that attack left 230,000 people without power for in an average from one hour to six hours. And the impact of this could be huge, specifically when you start thinking and looking at reputations, at safety, um, human lives, uh, environment protection, and the impact the loss of power could have resulted in. Uh, net, uh, not pita, pitya, um, in multiple organizations and multiple manufacturers all are talking in millions of impact. And this is important for people to understand because um, 
Yes, um, cybersecurity for OT engineers or ICS organizations is not something that they're used on or they've been thinking about, but it's right now is a reality. The challenge is exists and people are suffering from that. This is where we will start focusing it. What sort of attacks do, do have we seen in the past? Um, people always talks about external attackers. Um, yes, it happens and it happened multiple times. It will has a huge impact when it happens. However, the likelihood of that to happen is really not high. And, and for, there are a few reasons why that's the case, but really um, OT networks or ICS networks are designed with safety and physical security in mind. Um, there are some places which runs ICS network that there is no way you can reach them. It's like a military base. Um, if you wanna to go to Aramco sites, you can't get near these locations. Um, um, and in most of the cases, uh, it was designed with an air gap uh, architecture where no people can get in, assuming that all the rules are applied and people are not working around the air gap situation, um, which limits to a certain stage the external attacks. But what, have, what, what we have seen in the past um, that causes and happens more frequent than external attacks are malicious insiders and human errors. Now, um, if you sit back and you start thinking about these ICS network and the customers, there are um, quite a lot of them who outsource the operation of the plant to a third party company. And these third party companies could be the OEM themselves or could be another OT network operator. Um, and as a result of that, they create channels back to the plant through VPN tunnels. Um, they let their engineers and consultants to the plant to perform some maintenance and some um, operational work. And, and, and this cause, causes and have been causing issues from a human errors because there is no consistencies. These engineers cover hundreds of customers and they just operate their network. So you open yourself to human errors. Um, malicious insiders, these malicious insiders could, could be negligent. They don't really know what they're doing or they could have a plan to impact you. And this is, it's a little bit and slightly different. Yes, in IT, we do have external and insiders. Um, insiders are always more dangerous because you let them to into your network, but we do see external attacks more frequent in IT comparing to OT. Now let's look at what Tenable OT can do and how we can help the customer. There are five different capabilities that we provide, um, starting from an enterprise vulnerability. Now Tenable is the only vendor who can provide you with an IT OT converged solution. And what that means is we can provide you with the capability where you can centralize the information about the IT assets and the information about your OT assets, the vulnerabilities on your IT assets and the vulnerabilities on your OT assets in the same pane of glass, where you can generate the same type of reports you can do the same type of dashboarding. If you have an incident response process that you have, you can apply it on both of them. However, incident response in OT is very different to incident response in IT. But if you are a customer who's got to that maturity, then you can you can do um, you can do that. And, and as I mentioned, this is a unique um, capability that we we are bringing to the market because um, the trend in the last few years that we've seen is um, the CISOs are taking over the responsibility for IT and OT. And this is a great uh, addition uh, in, in, in enablement to the CISO to see both assets on the same, on the same location. Threat detection and mitigation, which I will talk about in, in the coming slide. Asset tracking, identify assets uh, from different OEMs and vendors. OT protocols are completely different to IT protocols. We do have a leading technology that can understand and identify these assets and a process that allows us to help the customer after sale to add discovery detection to assets and protocols. 
vulnerability management and decentralization with IT, and configuration control. Um, configuration control, um, when we speak about configuration control, we focus primarily on a certain component in the OT network, which I will cover in the coming um, two slides. How do we do that? Passive detection. So majority of our capability is through passive. We take a copy of the data, we feed it into a sensor, that sensor copy the data into the brain within the plant. Um, and when it comes to threat detection and mitigation, there are three different capabilities built into Tenable OT. Anomaly detection engine that deals with zero day attacks. We baseline the traffic in the communication. And when a deviation happens, we will alert the customer. Signature based, there is an OT IDS built based on Suricata, the next generation or the newer version of Snort, if you're used on Snort, that IDS is optimized, customized for OT networks. That's part of Tenable OT. The third component is policy-based, and this is a deterministic way um, that allows the engineers to put their rules down to the system. They could say, these three engineering stations are allowed to only talk to Siemens PLCs. If they spoke to another type PLC, let me know. If a fourth engineering station spoke to the same PLCs from Siemens, let me know. And that gets embedded into the system and that allows the engineers to put their own rules and get notified. And that's a true positive. That's not false positive. We're not detecting. We're not only baselining similar to what other vendors have been doing. Now I'll just quickly go back to safety because that's the number one concern for most uh, OT customers. Control layer within the OT network plays a major role in preventing any of these incidents. If a control has been compromised, if a service was not work, was not running and it starts running, if there is a specific fan that was not running and it starts running, if there is a specific sensor turned on and off um, outside of what's been designed to do, then that will have a direct impact on safety. That's why our solution focuses primarily on the controllers and PLCs to a point where you can turn on optionally um, capability within the system to go ahead and talk using native OEM protocols and commands to the controllers to pull information to the code level and maintain that information and keep comparing it over time. And when there is a change to your baseline code, we will let you know to the uh, details where we say this specific tag was actually deleted. And this allows you and enables the customer who opts into this capability, which is part of all the licenses, to detect changes at the control layer, even if these changes did not happen at the network. Because one of the things you need to keep in mind, not everything happens in the network. In OT networks, people, majority of engineers, they will take their laptops, serial connect to the controller, put the code in. Now, if you're not, if you don't have this capability, you're not gonna see this on the network and you're not going to be alerted as quick, you will be waiting for your anomaly detection engine, hoping that it will detect this. Um, here's just a simple example of how the deployments looks like. Um, sensors talks to Tenable OT core platform. Not going to spend a lot of time here, but just for you to visualize how this gets connected. Um, I spoke about uh, Tenable IT and OT converged solution, um, how it looks like few sensors reports to the control platform, which is the brain. That control platform can be managed by another enterprise manager, which manages multiple locations if you have multiple locations, but it also have a native integration to our leading IT vulnerability management solution, Tenable SC, also the cloud-based um, solution, Tenable IO, all together, to provide you with an IT OT visibility um, throughout your, um, your network. Um, this is another view of how it looks like. 
Um, they all integrate, as I mentioned, natively. Um, you cover one plant, multiple plants. You might have a manager of managers. The architecture could be as complex as this ICS network. Um, so it, the details are, are, are um, there are a lot of details that we can talk about, but for, sake, for the sake of time, I'm gonna stop uh, at this point. I um, uh, would like to thank you for listening to this presentation. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any question. If you wanna talk more about this, we're always available to help you.